Welcome to the rockofoffense.com Bible study. This ministry seeks to exalt Jesus Christ in his threefold ministry of being prophet, priest, and king. Remember these words from Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Keys to Interpreting the Bible It may be an odd place to begin, but we need to begin our study on how to interpret the Bible with talking about Satan. Uh, we know the Bible teaches us that he comes as an angel of light, and his ministers as, as also as angels of light. Satan and his ministers actually work in the churches today and of all time to deceive the people of God. We All through the New Testament, almost every book in the New Testament warns us about deceivers in the church. He comes with subtle deception. It's not a very easy thing to detect sometimes. It's very subtle, the, the lies of Satan. Satan uses scripture. When he tempted Christ, he was using scripture. And then Christ, of course, responded in like form using scripture as well. He's the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion, but Satan is. There is absolutely no truth in him. He's the father of lies. He, he achieves his purposes by lying. And no, what better way would he have in, in to uh, teach people on the wrong way to interpret the Bible, the wrong way to understand the Bible? So with that as an introduction, let's move on to really try to understand how God tells us how to interpret the Bible. Okay, before we go to five steps on how to interpret the Bible, some of the mechanics of how to do it, there's four basic truths about the Bible that we really have to make sure that, that we agree. They're on your screen in front of you right now, and we're going to talk through each one briefly. And once we get through those four, we'll, we'll be able to go on and learn the five steps on how to interpret the Bible. Okay, the first foundation, very important, is that the, we must agree that the Bible is truth from God. The Bible says that thy word is truth. The Bible says that it is truth. When Jesus stood in front of uh, Pontius Pilate, Jesus asked Pontius Pilate, what is truth? And he had no reply. He didn't know. Just as many, many people in this world don't know what truth is, um, it, it's vitally important that we, we come to the, to the agreement as a Christian that the Bible is the truth from God. Uh, all scripture, and note the word all in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture, not, not just parts of it, everything. God has miraculously preserved the word of God through, through the, the, the ages. And there's, there's, there's historical proof to that, of course, but we don't even need that historical proof. We know as Christians when we read the Bible that it's beautiful. It, it all fits together. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable. It's, it's got value. It, every piece of it, every jot and tittle of it is, 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 is profitable for, for our spiritual, spiritual well-being. Uh, prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but by holy men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. All, all scripture has one author, and that's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of Christ is the author of the Bible. Um, that, that's, that's, that's really important to understand that we have one author. It's by different, you went through different human beings, but there's actually just one author. Um, and it, really important, that last verse there, if any man teach otherwise and consent not, which means to agree not, with wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we know are the whole Bible because the Spirit of Christ wrote, wrote the Bible, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing. So many people in this world want to criticize the Bible. They say, oh, it's not, it can't be real. It's, it's been corrupted by man. It's it, it's outdated. It, it's, it's, it was only for the Western culture. It's not for the Eastern culture. There's other things that they, they have, and it all leads to all different paths to God. That's just not true. That's pride. That's pride speak, and it means that you can pick and choose and you can allow Satan to be confusing because all those other religions don't agree. So people that are very proud, they, they won't accept the Bible. It, it can't be the truth from God. They, they, they don't want to believe it. They're, they're very proud. We also have to believe that the Bible is sufficient. 
everything we need to know about God, everything we need to live a holy life, everything that we, we need for our spiritual well-being is in the Bible. We, we don't serve an unknown God. As they, uh, Paul, when he was in Athens, the, 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 the people of Athens, there were statues that said that they served an unknown God. We don't serve an unknown God. We know his name. It's the God Jehovah of the Old Testament. It's Jesus. We, ser- we know and we know that Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, is the Word of God. He's the bread of life. The whole Bible is really Jesus in written form. It's the bread that we live by. It's, it's, it's what we are nourished by. We don't need psychology books. We don't need the New Age movement. We don't need tradition. We don't need all these other things. We're just trying harder. Our good works. We don't need that to be spiritually sound and whole and grow. We just don't need that. It, it actually, it's, it's, it's tactics of Satan to take us off, to get our minds off of the, the truth that he's preserved for us for all time. As Colossians 2.10 says, we are complete in Christ. Everything we need for a spiritual well-being, we already have in Christ, and, it's in, and Christ is in the Bible. The Bible is Jesus Christ in written form. And the Bible in many places warns us to not take away or add to, to the Word of God. And in other words, the Word of God is just enough that we need. It's not too much. It's not too little. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. It's, it's the, everything that we need. The, the Bible is sufficient for our spiritual truth. Okay, the, uh, the next uh, foundation is that we have to understand that the Bible is spiritual, okay? And it, it's, it's revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. The Bible, although historically true, and although it may have a lot of um, moral truths in it, we have to realize that not only is it historically and morally true, it's also a spiritual book. And that's its prime message and, on how it addresses our, our, our spirit and how we can be saved. Jesus said that the words that he spoke were spirit and they are life. They're spiritual words. They're, they're, they're not always meant to be taken literally. They're, they're spiritually tr- spiritual truth. Even in the historical things and the moral things that are discussed in the Bible, there's spiritual truth behind there. There's that, that extra dimension of truth that, that true Christians will recognize and believe. And they are what bring us eternal life. We see many places in the Bible that it's the Holy Spirit. Once a a person becomes a child of God, the Holy Spirit indwells them, and the the Holy Spirit illuminates. The Holy Spirit is called our teacher. He illuminates. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God, and we're led by his spirit. Okay, continuing with the Bible is spiritual, um, and I titled this slide, Parables and Dark Sayings. You know, um, the, the Bible is, in a sense, it's, it's simple because there's a lot of very simple things to read in there. But Jesus said that without a parable, he did not speak. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Jesus spoke in parables often. Um, and we see that there, in parable, it's like a metaphor. It, it's an it's a, uh, a, a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. We have proverbs. Proverbs are similar to parables. They're, they're symbolic. They're metaphors for, for other deeper spiritual truth. The Bible's called a dark saying. It's called a riddle. It's an allegory. It's a shadow. It's a mystery. All these, these depictions of the Bible are, are, underscore that the Bible has spiritual meaning. It's not just to be taken on its surface. We, we believe it's, it's historically true, but we, we look beyond that into the spiritual meaning of what's in the Bible. Okay, and the final foundation for us, before we go into the actual steps of interpretation, is that the whole Bible points to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, Jesus, again, he is the, the word of God. He is the bread of life. And everything in the Bible, it, it, in some way, it points... It might point to sin. It might point to, to many spiritual things that, that ultimately all point to Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 5.39, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are which testify of me, which is Jesus Christ speaking. The scriptures 
are pointing to Jesus Christ. Even in the Old Testament, the whole Bible, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they were naked. Naked is a, is a spiritual pic, picture of being in need of covering. The robe of Christ's righteousness covers us. There's this beautiful truth all through the Bible from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. It's all pointing to the, to, to the need that we have, and that's for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Lord. Uh, also in Luke 24, beginning at Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, he expounded all things concerning himself. Yes, Jesus is found in the law of Moses, all the sacrifices, the prophets, and the Psalms. All through the Old Testament, it was shouting about Jesus. The, the name Jesus might not have showed up, but we, we need to look at the spiritual meaning behind what happened in the Old Testament to understand Christ in the scriptures. Okay, so with that as a foundation, let's go on now and look at the five steps of interpreting the Bible. And these things, um, they, they, they take practice and it takes a lot of work um, to, to actually spend time in the Word of God. But let, let's go on and look at the, these five steps. Okay, first is to understand the passage within its context. Um, spending time in the Bible is very important. To understand the context of something in the Bible means that you, we have to read and we have to meditate. You know, there's scriptures in the Old Testament that say we, the Bible, the Word of God, should be our meditation day and night. Some people have satisfied themselves with just five minutes a day or a quick devotional in a, in a little magazine. That, that's, that's, that's not enough. That, that, that we have to be willing to spend the time. We need to be willing to worship God in this manner that we're going to spend time in his word. It should be our meditation day and night. Even when we're working, when we're driving, when we're doing what, shopping or whatever we're doing, the word of God should be part of us. It should be things happen and we relate that to a scripture. Um, and the context of the Bible is the Bible itself. So as we read the Bible more and more and more, we see... We see threads that run through the Bible. We see that in the Old Testament, we see sheep are referred to in the, the Old Testament, and we find the fulfillment in the New Testament that Jesus is the good shepherd, and, and we were like the lost sheep that were gathered. So the first step is to understand the passage within its context, and we do that by read, 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 understand, meditate on the Word of God. Okay, the second step in uh, how to interpret the Bible is to examine all related scripture. And in other words, when we look at that passage in John 10, which says that Jesus is the shepherd and we're the sheep, we, we, we go and we, we go through the Bible, we, we look up similar words like shepherd and sheep, and, and we use our Bible to, uh, tools like concordances and, and other tools that we, we find that, that it's a beautiful richness to the Bible. We find that shepherds were in the Old Testament. We, we, we find that the book of Psalms has so many beautiful passages. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We, we have so much rich richness and beauty in the Bible. We just don't read the Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, but we have to go through the Bible. Isaiah 28 says it beautifully. We line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. We, 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 don't, we, we go through the Bible and we compare Scripture with Scripture. Use a concordance. Study helps. There's so many available information. I, I noted a, um, a great website, esor.net. That's the Bible I use, and there's all type of study helps. You can quickly look at, like for example, there's a, a word that you, in the New Testament and the New Testament was written in Greek, you can, you can click on a number on that word and you have all the, all the places that that word is used in the New Testament. Same with the Old Testament. And there's many, many ways to, to make it so easy for us to go and, and search the scriptures diligently and meditating them and see the beautiful richness to them. Um, use a Bible that is, is, is essentially a literal translation. A word for word Many, many translations are perfectly fine, but, but, but there's a few translations that are not a literal translation. A literal translation helps you be able to compare words in the Bible, compare scripture with scripture. King James, New King James, Modern King James, uh, American Standard Version, New American Standard Version, 
and many others are essentially a, a, a word for word translation. They're different, there's some variations, but if you study it deeply enough, it doesn't really matter that much. But avoid Bibles that are that are what are called a dynamic equivalent or a paraphrase like NIV, Good News Bible, things that they, they the, the Bibles they they admit that they're not really a word for word translation. The the people that translated it took what they believed the scripture was saying, so they're like a filter, and then they wrote in in their words what it meant. And that's a very dangerous thing. It, it, there's nothing wrong with reading a Bible like that. But you have to recognize that you're not going to be able to, to really study. So your primary study Bible should not be the one of those type of Bibles. Because every word in the Bible is inspired. All scripture, every word, every jot and tittle, as it says in, in the New Testament, every little thing in the, in the Bible is important in the original languages. So we want an English translation that, to the extent possible, can translate it word for word. Okay, the, probably the most important step, the most important step in interpreting the Bible is to compare Scripture with Scripture. And it is actually God's command on how to study the Bible. And we find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. The things in the Bible are not man's wisdom. They're, they're not some new concept or some some new idea that somebody has or somebody's opinion it's actually god teaching us in the bible they're, so they're not man's wisdom but it's what the goal, holy ghost that that the holy spirit that indwells us he's our teacher he teaches us he opens our eyes he leads us and the way that happens is that we compare spiritual things with spiritual in other words in the bible the whole bible spiritual we take a passage in John 10 and we compare it to a passage in Psalm 23 and we get beautiful richness on what a shepherd means or what sheep mean. Jesus' words are spirit and they are life. They're, they're spiritual. The, the words, it has a, it, it, the Bible is, sometimes when, when you say the Bible is spiritual, people say, well, you don't believe in the historic part of the Bible. That's not true. What we're saying is that the Bible is historically true, it's morally true, but it's also spiritually true. There's too many people that just say that, well, it's a history book, it's a good moral lesson. No, it's much more than that. It's a spiritual book that we get spiritual truth besides just the historical and, and the moral truth. So we compare scripture with scripture. We, ha we have to take the time in the Bible and, and compare scriptures that are similar. And we have so many study helps that can help us do that. Okay, and the final, uh, finally, we want to look at look for the gospel message. We we remember that the, the the Bible is Jesus in written form. The Spirit of Christ was in the prophets in the Old Testament as they brought forth the Bible. We we remember in Luke twenty four where Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, they all talked about Christ. So we want to f look for the gospel. We 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 read a historical passage in the Old Testament. We say, "Wow, what does that mean?" Just a, a history lesson. No, it's not it. Especially, there's many places, but for one example, the book of Judges is this continual cycle that, that, that uh, Israel would sin, and they, they, they got into trouble, they got taken captive, or they got, got uh, another co nearby country that persecuted them, and they needed somebody, a judge, whether it was Samson, whether it was Barak, or whoever, that a judge would rise and, and act as Jesus Christ as a savior, and deliver the people from their, their persecutors and their enemies. It was a constant cycle of sin and salvation. So the whole book of Judges was all about the gospel. And it, it's, it doesn't mention Jesus Christ, it, it, but it, it, we have to look at that and we have to recognize what the spirit, and that's the spiritual meaning of the passage. It's looking for spiritual things like sin and salvation, judgment day, hope, the future, the things, it, it's all in the Bible, and we want to look for spiritual truth. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, that refers to Genesis 1, the, the act of creation. The first thing, God said, let there be light that shine out of darkness. That God has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we found when when God, right in the beginning of Genesis 1, it said, let there be light, well, the real spiritual meaning is that is that we need the light of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is the light that, that's given us the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we, we compare scripture to scripture. Well, if we see in the New Testament, we see that, oh, the gospel is light. Well, when was light, light created? That was the first thing that God did. Um, Isaiah 55, 11. So my word shall be that which goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Every word in the Bible is valuable. All the history, all the genealogies, all the law, everything from Genesis to Revelation, it's all valuable and it won't come back void. There's, there's a purpose and there's a meaning in everything in the Bible. Sometimes it's hard to find that and we struggle and maybe we don't find it. Maybe it takes us 20 years to finally see it. Maybe we never see it, but it's there. And it is, the, the word will come back and it, it, it'll accomplish that which God pleases and it'll prosper. The word of God is, is beautiful, it's powerful, it, it's sufficient for everything we need. Okay, and finally, whatever we come up with in the Bible, because we don't want to be, as Satan's and his ministers, we don't want to be finding wrong conclusions. And we have to do our spiritual homework, and we have to be patient, and we have to compare Scripture with Scripture, and we have to show, make sure that when we've determined what we believe about, about sin or about salvation or about the Holy Spirit or about, about the gifts of the Spirit, whatever we, we find that we believe is truth, we have to go back and we have to say, okay, let's make sure there's nothing that contradicts what we believe. God is not the author of confusion. The Bible is written in a very parabolic manner. It's written as a dark saying there's there's things that it's there so we will go search the the truth out it's it, it's a beautiful thing to, to 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 find truth in the bible um god's word is truth and the the, the just the final verse here um whom shall he teach knowledge who shall god teach knowledge and to whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast and that reminds us of first peter 2 2 that says that we're, that, that we're, we, we need the milk of the word of God. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line, here a little, there a little, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Sometimes we, 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 we have to spend a lot of time and, and understand obscure things and spend time to really come to the truth about the Bible, but it's a beautiful work and it's the work of every true Christian. <music>